Welcome back to Cal Report After Hours with the panel, a power women panel, and one of the most powerful women in Congress is from years ago, Congressman Nancy Johnson, 24 years in, in Congress, and uh, many, many things to her name. If, if, if you are of the half million people in the state of Connecticut that rely on Husky, you should exactly. think that yeah, Nancy yeah. Johnson was Great the person job. who actually, who actually yeah. did that. And my panel of mostly millennials, with the exception of Joy jo Latina, yeah. I was explaining to you I'm that... I'm the senior in the crowd. Yeah. If, you can, if, you can if you can believe the fact that Nancy Johnson was able to do all this without without devices. Yeah. Don't oh, tell she, me. She I don't had understand. Like corded, corded phones, and you know what they did together? Gather around, boys and girls. They build relationships. She and talk to people. had dinner with people. Exactly. She actually talked. Like she through worked, Skype. She yeah. no no Skype back then. So Nancy, besides that, I'll, I'll yeah. say, how has Congress changed? And I suspect for the worse. Actually. Congress hasn't changed. Please get over that. <laughs> it's the people that have changed. It's the d kind of dialogue we choose to have in our own lives, with our own children, with our own friends. Yes, sir. It's puny dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's whatever fits in three words, whatever fits in a bumper right. sticker. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, not even the issues at the state level lend themselves anymore to that kind of discussion. The big view in my mind is that after World War II, with a growing economy and a growing population, we created a growing government. Mm -hmm. We had the means, we had the ability to respond to needs, and it was the right thing to do. Now, particularly in Connecticut, we have a shrinking economy yeah. and a declining population. The sixth no longer exists because Shrink Connecticut's is. population exactly. has not been growing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look at the reality, and it has nothing to do with this governor. It has to do with the fact that political vision isn't driving discussion anymore. There's no long-term plans. It's That's just short-term, right. short-term, short-term. Right. Short short right. short right. And you lose the essence of being a legislator and really trying to create generational Absolutely. impact change into people, just like as you did back then with Husky. Yeah. And, you know, me coming to this country, uh, my brother, we had no access to health care other than Husky from yeah, my young brother. Yeah. Like, I, you had a direct impact on yeah. the well-being of my family's and, life and through legislation Husky years ago. Husky was very hard to get through. Mm -hmm. When Kennedy came to me to sponsor it in the, in the house, he couldn't get anyone else. Now, I was also well known in both children and health issues, yes. and I was also on the Ways and Means Committee. But I'd go to my colleagues. I couldn't get co-sponsors. They agreed with me, but they couldn't put their name, Republican or Democrat. I mean, were they just fearful? Because, yes, it was a new entitlement. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I said to the senator, I will co-sponsor it, but you can't mandate that it be that it go through Medicaid because nobody likes Medicaid and Medicaid doesn't mm -hmm. pay and it isn't mm -hmm. working so he changed that and then later on Orrin Hatch in the center, Senate said I will help you get this through. So Nancy just speaking, speaking of health care let's stay on that for a quick second Affordable Care Act uh, obviously you've, you've been watching that um, yeah. from the sidelines well, what's your take on that uh, tweak it change it get rid of it keep it what do you think? Well we have to we have to have a program that provides affordable health care to all Americans and to do that, we can only subsidize people who need more health care than they can afford. afford. When you subsidize all premiums, you're subsidizing the premiums of people who will never use it. Right. Because the cost drivers are about 10% of the population in some diseases, 20%. You can't subsidize everybody's premium and expect to be able to afford it. So you need a combination of factors. And the truth is that while it's complicated, that combination is in the House bill. It needed to be enriched. The Senate was in the process of enriching it. It will finally happen. But because because that's the only place to go. You have to be able to pay for it. You know, as Unfortunately, we, as, we've as, lost track of that. As, small as, fact. as we sit here, you know, in a, in a, in a, <laughs> as we sit here like in, a panel, in, a, in a panel full of women, it's interesting to know that that when you were in Congress, at one time you were this most senior female in Congress, right. and in many ways you kind of, um, you know, led a path for women in, in politics. Are there enough women in politics not now? Um, there's, there may be one, gov one woman on the Democratic side thinking about running for governor, but, but overall, have we made gains? We have a, uh, a Republican woman state senator who's running for governor already. So uh, women 
make a really important contribution in politics, I wouldn't say that their contribution is so different on the basis of their sex. Right. Their methods tend to be different. They tend to be more interested in consensus. They sometimes have a hard time closing the deal. Mm -hmm. And can I ask you something on that also? We just had a woman running for president, um, and you would listen to some of the interviews that were being done, and some both men and women said that they would never really want to vote for a woman president. Do you think that we'll see a woman president, and what does she have to do to actually be elected, do you think? Oh, I think we will sometime absolutely see a woman president. And I think uh, um, the senator from uh, the Democratic senator from um, California, I'm blocking on her name. Uh, help me Kamala out. Harris. Harris. What? Kamala Harris. No, no, the senior uh, one from California. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi. Know, right? yeah Pelosi. No, 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 no. She's the House. Yeah. Oh, back, uh, uh, Pelosi. No, 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 sir. No, no. no. Anyway, lost it. She's a, she's a lawyer. She's been uh, uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a lot of other uh, positions. She's very, very well regarded and she is profoundly knowledgeable in domestic and international politics. Unfortunately, she won't run now because she's just a little well, let me too just, old. Let, let me, let me, it's coming about. along. You have to have the capability. We're seeing the price that gets paid when you come in without right, well, yes. In the few minutes we have remaining, let's get, let's get to some local local politics. And this, you know, the Nancy Johnson brand of Republicanism yeah. seems to be somewhat on the wane, at least nationally. And here in Connecticut, and will will there be moderate Republicans again in Connecticut, or, oh, or are you? There's, I have to disagree. You panel. I have to disagree. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you have Mayor Stewart of New Britain, <laughs> who actually worked with Nancy. Oh, and was I asked Congresswoman Johnson the question. <laughs> <laughs> There's really Nancy Republicans in the Connecticut right, right, Republican right, right, Party, right. <laughs> and, and that component is actually growing. Now, the hard thing is, it is the press, with all due respect, fake news does not give both sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. You've got to do that. You've got to stop taking sides by being silent. Mm -hmm. I know when I first elected the state senate, the first budget I worked on, we were really proud of good, three good Republican rational amendments that would have made the budget better and, and more affordable. The Hartford Current ran a front page article and it said, it talked about the budget and then it said the Republicans voted no. It didn't say what our amendments were. See, how can you expect people to understand the difference between the parties right, we'll get, if you never go in right, we have to the wrap pros this, and cons? We have to wrap this up, but um, do you scream at your TV when you see the president? Uh, Sometimes. I, 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 I hate his lack of understanding of either vision or leadership. Hmm. But I have far more respect than you or most are showing for the people who elected him. A lot of them don't like that either, but they know that we weren't talking to ourselves honestly, and we weren't. And and look at our governor. He says there's big savings. This was this was several budget resolutions that passed. There weren't. They didn't materialize. Uh, our own president ran around saying, you know, you can have to save, have your own doctor. You can ha save. Your, you can keep in your own plan. You couldn't. We have never had so much untruth, not spoken once but over and over, over and over, and the this press jumping right in. Even even with Trump, I mean, he did say some very good statements about Charlottesville. Unfortunately, he said some really inadequate statements, but you don't quote one and not the other. I mean, we have to be a little bit more, because hateful behavior is intolerable in a democracy, and so is mob violence, and it doesn't matter who the mob is. Correct. We can't rule by mob. We have to rule through dialogue. We made it very hard to have a dialogue about the issues before us because they're all complicated and we're all having to build back. We're going to have to shrink down at both the federal and the state level. And to do that well, the society has to learn how to pick up and where to help out. And we can do that. It takes time. It takes seriousness. It takes enormous compassion. Mm -hmm. And well, we don't have that anymore in our politics. Well, let's we'll end it there on, on that great note. That's why we like having Nancy Johnson here. <laughs> Thank you for coming in, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.